Hey, what's up, Rattlers? So this is my fifth time here in Australia, and this is my first time in all those trips that I'm in Darwin, Australia, in the Northern Territories. And we are gonna go from here in Darwin all the way down to Alice Springs and back, which is like Minneapolis to Dallas and back. And we're gonna do it all in a couple of days, and we're gonna find some of the most incredible herps that Australia has to offer. So I'm with Brian Cusco. You guys know his channel from Brian Cusco and Triple B TV. If you don't, I'm putting his link in the description below. Check him out. I'm also with a couple of our Australian friends. We're gonna load up this camper and we are gonna go on the most amazing Australian reptile adventure. I'm Dave Kaufman and I am obsessed with reptiles. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. This is what we rented to get around Australia. Look at that, we do not look like tourists driving around in that, so we've got that going for us. So this is a banded tree snake, they're also called night tigers, and this is one of the boega species that's found here in Australia. Boega! And there is Brian trying desperately hard to film him. <laughs> it's kind of working. Oh, dude, dude, dude! Brian, tell us about this boega, will you please? He's awesome. Uh-huh. Well, I don't know that he's a he. He looks kind of he-ish, but he's, look at him, look at him. He's fantastic. The only thing I can tell you about him for sure is that I know virtually nothing about him other than he's a snake on the road in Australia, the first one I've ever seen, which makes him possibly the coolest snake I've ever seen in my entire life. That is a true statement. Look at the freaking colors, dude. Look at that. It's an amazing looking. Dude, that thing's amazing looking. And it's our first snake of the trip. That rules. So like the mangrove cat-eyed snakes that we were finding in Thailand, this is a boega, and therefore it is a rear-fanged mildly venomous snake but again most of the venom that comes from this genus boega is not harmful to humans that's Oops. such sick footage Whoa, look at that. he rises to the occasion <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we just found this holly cross frog. Ewan just told us that these can stay underground for years and they eat ants. But look at how he inflates his body like that to make himself look as big as possible so that anything that comes along that wants to eat him is gonna think twice about it. So we just found this Nikolai cross frog that Ewan said can bury itself for years. And look how he puffs up his body like that's on his kid's tail. <laughs> oh, what a neat little dude. He just wanted to squeeze, he just wanted to squeeze those little cheeks just to squeeze them. So this is this frog's defense. If a predator comes along, he will stick his butt out and tuck in his head. <laughs> and if that doesn't work, this is the frog that'll just sit there and scream at a predator. And he did that a little bit, but I don't think we can get him to do it again. Scream like you're full of life! <laughs> so you, you know, is this one of those frogs you can see with this frog and have a good time? Tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, aren't you driving? Alright, we got another snake here. Out the car we go. What have we got? Oh, look at that. This is a python for children. <laughs> this is a little children's python. 
But, Brian, this is your life, or is it not? It, it is. This is the first time I've found... Uh, well, this is the first time in Australia. Everything here is a first for me. Ugh, he pooped on me. He pooped on me, too. Oh, we're poop brothers. We're poop brothers. The funny thing is that I just kind of assumed that these guys were called children's pythons because they were the tiniest of pythons ever. But uh, I was somewhat disappointed to learn that it was actually the fact that the guy who first named these, his last name was children. That's correct. So I, I just... Yeah, that was, uh, honestly, I'm still disappointed about that, and I tell kids about it at the educational shows that I'm disappointed that the reason it's called the Children's Python is because the, last, the guy named it after himself. Right. But it's all right. That's pretty cool. He found it. I guess if I found my own snake that was this cool, I'd call it the Cusco snake. Cusco. Yeah. Cusco eye. Cusco eye. Yeah. It's all cusco in here. Cusco python. Let's get it, Cusco. Let's get it, Cusco, in here. It's, this is amazing, dude. There's bugs crawling all over me. Oh, no, this is, yeah, this, look at the that. The sweat from my uh, is three days old at this point, and uh, it's fantastic. A lot of people, you know, may not realize that these are actually common pythons out here. Are you going to put the part in there about my Yeah, absolutely, I'm going to put the part in there about your The world needs to know more about Brian Cusco's <sighs> All right, little buddy. Go on back. See you, buddy. Wow, look at this. Everything is burnt out here from the fires. Yikes. So this is a marbled velvet gecko. So these are really variable geckos and they're found throughout Australia. And the ones that we were finding in Queensland in previous trips look very different from the ones we're finding here in Northern Territories. But like all geckos, these guys lay two eggs at a time and these are just really awesome geckos. And these are really popular amongst keepers if you can get them. But this one in particular, I've never seen this particular one available, but I'm sure they're out there. But man, what an amazing gecko. So we're playing Chinese fire Ow. drill. Brian, this is your first time driving in Australia. So well, you what just, you need to know... You just stepped on my foot, so I'm not sure how driving have, is going to be. I have a really big, thick foot. And that's not all. So, uh, yeah, so drive on the opposite. I, I've driven in, in the UK and in Ireland and Scotland. I, I think I'll be all right. But this is Australia. Yeah, but it's the same pro principle. Okay. Left side of the road. All right. Or wrong side. Ready to do this? This may be the last time you hear from us. <laughs> it has been quite some time since I've driven on this side of the road. Yeah, yeah. Maybe like a decade or so. But... Well, you're, you're on the wrong side of the road. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So here by this river in Darwin, we just caught one of the most awesome monitor lizards. So here in Australia, there's a few species of water monitors and one of them is this guy. This is a Mitchell's water monitor. So this is Varanus Mitchelli. And these, yeah, they're kind of medium sized monitors. They certainly don't get as big as the Asian water monitors, but man, these are just cool little monitors. And one of the things that I love so much about them is their pattern. I mean, look at that head pattern just with kind of that brownish yellow color coming through, but man, the little, I don't know, you might call them horseshoe pattern on the back. Man, this is just such an amazing little monitor. So aside from living in fresh water, Mitchell's water monitors can also live in salt water, and these are often found on the beaches here, but look at this little guy. I mean, he is just so chill and so docile and so friendly that I'm gonna get bit any minute, I know it. Just look at how chill this dude is. He's just sitting right on my fingers. This is a wild water monitor. So when we think about water monitors, we think about these huge giant Asian water monitors. Well, this water monitor here in Australia, this is an adult. This is all the bigger they get. 
And what's interesting and, well, kind of sad about that is that because of this monitor's size, with the invasive cane toads in this area, they were decimating this lizard's population because a big cane toad can easily make a meal out of a lizard this size, let alone one younger than this. And so what's happened is that their populations in this area have just declined considerably. And so what's happening now is that the population of these lizards are making a bit of a comeback but they were almost completely wiped out because of the invasive cane toad or marine toad. So with that in mind, to have this little guy in my hand, to know that there is still viable and healthy populations of these guys out here in Australia, it's a really good thing to know and it's a really good feeling to be holding this, which was a target species, right in my hand like this. So again, the Mitchell's water monitor, Varanus Mitchelli, such a cool lizard. I'm sure you guys can hear the creek right behind me where I found him, and that's exactly where I'm gonna go put him back right now. All right, we got a frilly here. Where is he up here? All right, you go that way, I'm gonna go this way. Ghost frilly. There's the frilly. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. He is happy to see us. Look at that frill, that's huge. All right, Rattlers, so this is one of the most iconic lizards here in Australia. When you think about the lizards of Australia, you really can't not think about the frilled dragon. Um, this is just an amazing little dude, actually, and... Can't not, huh? Can't not, I said it. <laughs> and you know, the ones that we have in herpeticulture, they all come out of New Guinea. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get them out of it anymore. So hang on, are you sure it's recording? <laughs> yep, yep. You got your mic right. on, Dave? Yeah, yeah, I got mic on. Take 15. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> oh yeah, so the ones that we have in herpeticulture that we all know and love, they more than likely came out of New Guinea, where this is also native to, but the ones here in Australia, man, they just have these amazing red colors on them, and they're really heavily patterned. This is just an amazing lizard. Very well behaved. Yeah, he really is. So you can see that he has this really huge frill, and inside that frill are tiny little bones and they come from the hyoid and those are projections off of that bone with, a, with the skin in between the uh, projections and that's what makes this frill. Almost kind of like a bat wing. Yeah. Almost like a bat wing, yeah, yeah, yeah. So another interesting thing about these lizards is that during the dry season, they are nowhere to be found. They go high up in the canopies in the tree and they stay there throughout the entire dry season. But in the wet season, which has just begun here, they come down off of that canopy, they sit on the roads and sun, that's why we saw this guy. But yeah, I mean, if we were here in the dry season, we would not be seeing these lizards. They just completely disappear up in the canopy and stay there. These are just awesome dudes. Look at this frill. But here, I want to show you guys something. So we always have seen this pose, but that's what it looks like behind the frill. This is just a beautiful, colorful lizard. Look at those canine teeth coming from the top of the jaw and the bottom of the jaw. Brian, I really hope you don't get bit. What if I just move him over so that he bites you? I could, I'm could. i in a great position to do that right now. Well, I am on a quest to be bitten by every Australian reptile. Uh, it looks like a sunset ball python. I'm sure all you ball python lovers out there are going to enjoy that little tidbit. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Rattlers, this is awesome, and uh, there's more adventures coming up from here in Australia. So until then, love the planet. Uh, save your reptiles. <laughs>